that dreaded red notification just popped up again in your Google Drive and you're out of storage, but don't panic and don't buy more storage yet. Today, I'm going to show you seven insider techniques that Google doesn't advertise, methods I've personally used to reclaim countless gigabytes of space over the years without deleting a single important file. Most people make the critical mistake of only focusing on their drive files, completely overlooking where the majority of their storage is actually being consumed. And by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to target the hidden features, the hidden storage hogs like Google Drive, Gmail and Photos. And I'll share my automated system that keeps your storage optimized forever. Stick with me for the next few minutes. It might just save you from paying for storage you don't actually need. Before we dive in, let me clarify something important. Your 15 gigabytes of free Google Drive storage isn't just for Drive files. It's actually shared across three Google services, Drive, Gmail, and Google Photos. It's important you understand this because it means we need to tackle all three areas to really free up space. First, let's see exactly what's eating up your storage. Head over to drive.google.com, click on the profile picture in the top right corner and select manage your Google account. From there, I wanted to click on storage. Did you do that? Good. This gives you a detailed breakdown of how your storage is being used across Drive, Gmail and Photos. Now. Let's start with the absolute quickest wins. You're going to want to click on storage management as there you'll see a clean up space button. When you click it, Google will compile the items in your storage that are taking up the most space. These are items like spam emails, large photos and videos, large files and emails with very large attachments. You can also clean up your account for each of the different services, photos, Gmail or Drive. Clicking on one of these options will show you Google suggestions to delete items taking up a lot of space. However, and this is a big caveat, don't just blindly delete files taking up a lot of space. Review what they are and make sure you don't need them. They don't, you don't really want to accidentally delete something really important. And here's a pro tip for you. Files in your trash still count against your storage quota until they're permanently deleted. Click the trash button in the left menu and click empty trash to free up space immediately. Similarly, head to your Gmail trash and spam folders and empty those too. This one step alone basically can sometimes recover gigabytes of space. Let's move on to finding and removing large files. In your Google Drive, click on the storage sections in the left sidebar. Drive automatically sorts your files by size, showing the largest files first. And it's amazing how often I find a huge file I completely forgot about and no longer need. It takes me just a few minutes to review these large files and, and delete anything unnecessary. I know some of you search pros will want to search by file size using operators in the search bar like this one. But I'm sorry to say it won't work as Google doesn't have that functionality. However, Drive does support other types of operators. Here's another search trick. Type this operator to see only the files you own. This is important because other Google accounts that share files with you, well, those files actually don't count against your storage quota. So really, you can basically just ignore those for now. Let's tackle those duplicate files that are secretly eating up your storage. Type duplicate in the search bar and Drive will show you potential duplicates. That's pretty clever, right? You can further refine this by clicking on people and choosing yourself to see your potential duplicate files. Review them carefully and delete the copies you don't need. I personally use this feature every few months and I'm always surprised by how many duplicates creep into my drive. Like seriously, how many photos of the same cup of coffee do I really need, right? <laughs> Speaking of coffee, I'm basically fueled by it daily. And after struggling to find consistently great beans, my partner and I founded Coffeeness to create the perfect chocolatey espresso blend. We've tested this blend in over 100 machines to make it perfect. Take a look at our overflowing storage rooms right here with all the machines. From high-end manual espresso machines, like this beauty here, to Breville or Sage 
semi-automatics, or maybe you're the super automatic guy and you prefer a Dura machine like this one here, or the budget models from DeLonghi that works also perfectly with our espresso. It delivers exceptional results every single time. Wonderful. We personally visit our partner farms in Brazil every year, sourcing 100% Arabica beans through direct trade relationships. And each small batch is freshly roasted in Brooklyn, resulting in a medium strength espresso with delightful chocolate and hazelnut notes. Our customers love it too, with hundreds of five-star reviews on our website and Trustpilot. One reviewer wrote, great beans for my super auto with smooth crema as in a coffee bar in Italy. Lovely to hear that. Use the coupon code CLOUDWORDS for 5% off your first order and European viewers visit our EU store for beans roasted in Frankfurt and US viewers head to coffiness.com for Brooklyn roasted beans. All the links are in the description box below. And now, Back to today's video. Now let's move on to Gmail, which can be a huge storage hog for many people. Here's a game-changing search query to use in Gmail. Type this string in your search bar. This finds all emails with attachments larger than 10 megabytes. You'd be shocked at how many ancient email attachments are silently consuming your storage. After extensive testing of different strategies, I've realized that focusing on attachments is the most efficient way to free up Gmail space. Those PDF reports, vacation photos, and video clips that people send you years ago, they, they really do add up over the years. And here's a neat trick to weed out all those promotional emails you seldom want and are over a year old. Here's what you'll want to type into the search bar. This filters those annoying emails so you can mass delete them. You can do the same thing by typing social in place of promotions and that search query. You can also tighten up the time scale to something shorter than a year to delete even more emails. Or if you don't want to bother with search query commands, Gmail conveniently categorizes these emails. So it's pretty convenient for you to access. Simply click on the category you want to review and delete what you don't need. Using these methods helped me find thousands of newsletter emails from, I don't know, 2017 that I was never going to read again and even if I read them, well, it's taken up space on my Gmails and I just don't want that. Deleting them freed up nearly a gigabyte of space in just a few minutes. For Google Photos, which is often the biggest storage consumer of all three services, if you've been backing up original quality photos and videos, they count against your storage. But here's the thing, Google Photos has a brilliant storage saver option that compresses photos to high quality, which still looks great. For photos uploaded before June 2021, these photos won't count against your storage quota at all, effectively reducing the storage they take up by 100%. You might wonder, What's so special about June 2021? Well, fun fact for you. This was when Google stopped offering unlimited free storage for your photos and started counting it against your overall storage quota. Photos taken after that will still take up space when set to high quality, but much less than their original sizes. To switch to Storage Saver, go to photos.google.com, click on the settings gear icon next to your profile picture and select Manage Storage. You'll see many options, including Recover Storage, click on Learn More, and Google will offer to switch your photos and videos to the Storage Saver quality. You'll have to agree that you understand that this process cannot be undone. In my experience, most people can tell the difference in quality, but the Storage savings are enormous. Obviously, if you're a photographer who cares about the latest megapixel in your enormous one meter by one meter print, then this is obviously not the best option for you, but you'll probably not be looking at the free storage plan of Google either. I tested this with my own vacation photos. I took identical shots and saved one in the original quality and one in storage saver. And on my 27 inch monitor, I generally couldn't see any difference, but the storage saver version was about 70% smaller. And that's a massive space saving with virtually no visible quality loss for the average user. While you are on this page, you'll also see how much storage other parts of your Google account are using, along with a few suggestions to review items that are taking up a lot of space. Space. Let's talk about Google Drive files specifically. One often overlooked strategy is transferring ownership of Google Drive files to 
someone else. If you collaborate on large files with teammates or family members, consider transferring ownership to someone with more available storage. To transfer ownership, right-click the file, click Share, enter the email of the person you want to transfer to, make sure they have editor access. Click the drop-down next to their name and select Make Owner. Once they accept, the file no longer counts against your storage quota. Ba -bam! Magic. I use this strategy all the time with my team. For instance, when working on a large video project, we'll transfer ownership to whoever has the most available storage and just make sure the new owner is reliable and won't delete that file. That's important. Let's dive into some advanced organization strategies that will help you maintain free space over time. First, create a system for your drive using folders with clear naming conventions. I personally like a structure like year project type, for example, 2023 vacation photos or 2024 tax documents finance. That's a very easy structure to, to go with. And once you have a structure, schedule regular cleaning sessions. I do this basically quarterly. I'll check my largest files, look for duplicates and delete or archive anything I don't need immediate access to. It's like spring cleaning for your digital life and it's remarkable satisfying. Yes, it takes 20 minutes, 30 minutes, depending on your files, but it's really worth it. Another approach is to use Google's built-in priority feature. If you have a workspace account, go to drive.google.com slash priority to see the files Google thinks are the most important to you. This can help you identify which files to keep in Drive and which could be archived elsewhere. For those really important files, you know, the ones you need to keep but don't look at often, consider opening a separate Google Drive account and only use it for these types of files or move it to a separate backup service more suitable for long-term archiving like iDrive, for example. After trying numerous workflows, I found that maintaining separate cloud storage services for different types of content works best for me. I keep shared team documents and work files in Google Drive, personal photos in Google Photos and iCloud, large media files like videos in pCloud, and my long-term archives in iDrive. So that's a pretty simple setup. It requires several subscriptions if you have a lot of files, but you can use free accounts in most of the cases as well. This separation makes it really easy to manage each type of content with the tools best suited for them. It's like having a dedicated storage area in your home, kitchen items, in the kitchen, tools in the garage, clothes in the closet, etc., etc. So it makes it really intuitive. Now, let's prevent future storage problems with some smart automations. First, set up filters in Gmail to automatically delete certain types of emails after a specific period. For example, Create a filter for newsletters that deletes them after 30 days. To create a filter, click the search options dropdown in Gmail, enter your criteria like this one, click on the filter icon on the right and then click create filter. You can set it to delete it or one of the other options and click create filter again. You can also use Google's cleanup suggestions for Gmail, which analyzes your inbox and suggests emails you can safely delete. Just go to the Gmail storage management page and look for the cleanup suggestions. If you're a Google Photos user make a habit of reviewing and deleting screenshots, screenshots memes, <clears throat> and downloaded images regularly. These often accumulate without us noticing and don't tend to have sentimental value. In the Photos app, search for screenshots to find and review them all at once. By implementing these strategies, you should be able to reclaim gigabytes of space without upgrading your storage plan. I personally managed to free up over seven gigabytes just using these exact methods after I thought thought I'd already optimized my storage. And remember, managing your Google Drive storage isn't a one-time task. It's a rather ongoing process, but with the strategies I've shared today, you'll be able to maintain plenty of free space with minimal effort. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. It really helps the channel and let me know in the comments which tip you found most useful or if you have any other storage saving techniques I didn't mention. Don't forget to subscribe for more tips and cloud storage advice. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.